What's up? This is Patrick. And I'm Joe. And we're in a band called Fallout Boy. And you're watching Pop Buzz. <laughs> Hi guys, James from Pop Buzz here in a very, very swanky hotel in deepest, darkest East London, joined now by one half of Fallout Boy, Patrick and Joe. How are you guys? Good, how are you doing? Hello. Hi. Are you recovered yet from last night? That was quite the show at Electric Brixton. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it, uh, I will say that we ha it was an early call uh, for us to be uh, downstairs t this morning right. after a show like that. So, <laughs> so there was a little bit of, there was, there's been a lot of coffee between, I between can imagine. Uh, then and now. How, how does it change for you guys? Because apart from the obvious like size difference compared to the arena shows, does like your prep change? Are you doing more? Is there more vocal warm ups? Are you warming up your fingers more, Joe? What's going on? More baby powder. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sweatier rooms, you know. Oh, I was like, what? What? Could, I don't. I. What could you possibly use baby powder for? You don't know what it's for. It's, I, I guess. I guess not. Apparently not. You gotta stop the interview and talk about <laughs> baby powder. This is this is good. educating Patrick on the on the ways of baby Sorry. powder. That'll be good. Um, I've been listening to the album, obviously, loads. Uh, congratulations, first Thank of you. all. And I guess the most obvious noticeable thing is there's so many different genres you're ticking off on this one. I mean, we've seen it a bit with the singles as well, but even things like church, you've got some gospel stuff mm -hmm. in there. Heaven's Gate's almost like doo-wop, really, in there. <laughs> I mean, is there any any genres you were particularly hoping to tick off this time, or is that just the way it kind of turned yeah, out? You know, it's... Uh, I um, I was talking about this the other day that that um, when I when I think about my heroes you know the, the, the people that I kind of learned how to make albums from listening to like you know like Elvis Costello or David Bowie or Queen or Prince you know um, that was just the thing it wasn't even really a thought it was just that's just how you make records is that you just make a lot of different things and make a lot of different kinds of music I didn't know that that wasn't how you're supposed to do it so so um, so it's uh, it's much less um, thought through than just you know I'm I'm just following this idea and seeing where it goes you know it's it's not really it's not really a conscious thing where I'm like where I'm like Let's see what I can pull over on them this time, you know. So, is there any genre you're too afraid to try? Any, any, any? No drum and bass yet, or anything like that? I think, yeah. I, I would think that it would be it would be uh, really tough to cover something that we, we don't know anything about, like you know, to like like I don't I don't really know anything about country music so so well, I, come on like I, I mean that's a challenge though surely I could I, I could see you guys doing I, I mean I number. yeah yeah I don't, it's that right over my head you know so <laughs> maybe for the next one we'll see uh, and, and speaking of like mixing genres and everything you had the um the btx bts sorry remix with rm of champion how involved are you guys with something like that does it do you just send it out to them and let them kind of take the lead or yeah in a lot of those cases with a lot of remixes and stuff um you you kind of you know ask if someone's interested and then and then just see what happens because because um it's it's so fascinating how quickly you know someone can turn something like that around so uh you know and and then i've tried to get involved in remixes before and it doesn't really work out the way you think it's 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 almost more exciting to to step back and be like let's see what you do let's see what happens here and um so yeah in this case it was one of those things that i was like i was like I don't want to know. I want to hear it afterwards and see and see how it is, because it's just more exciting that way. It's just more um, for me anyway. I feel like but, yeah, you know. it's like a pleasant surprise. It's yeah, yeah. Nice. Rather than rather than going, oh, but what if, what, what if you did this? You know, it's like. Well. Don't yeah. tell me how to do my job, guy. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a proper collab. Yeah, it's exactly, nice. So. Uh, do you guys have favorite tracks, favorite standout moments on the record? Anything you want fans to look out for when it's out next week? Yeah, definitely. There's. Um, I think, you know, it probably changes for me every day. Um, and I think we all probably have different answers in terms of what our, our favorite moments are. But for me at the particular moment, I would say that Heaven's Gate, I, I was listening to it again the other day and I was like, I, I like that song. I'm very happy yeah. with that song. So. That's a great song. Any favorite guitar lines in there? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's stuff I like all over the record. Um, I, I like the song Church a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. That one's my favorite probably. It's but great. I mean, I don't know. I forgot about some songs. I was playing the record for my wife and I forgot. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this song. I like this one too and this other. So I don't know. It's I'm happy with all of it. Yeah, something yeah. for everyone, 100%. Uh, I did want to ask you uh, as well, Patrick, like um, your vocals on this one, like it, it feels like it's almost more at the forefront if that's possible. I know you're a lead singer, that sounds stupid, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like something like um, Centuries, for example, that big, big vocal run at the end. Like how, is that improvised? Do you just go in and, and see sorry, what happens? Sorry, what song? The vocal run at the end of, I'm uh, oh, sorry, of Champion. Yeah, I was, I was, I was yeah, very I was like, confused. No 
gig is. last night's no thrown me for a yeah, loop. No, this is it. Yeah, yeah, the vocal on the end of Champion, though, like, is, th is that improv or have you kind of figured out something on piano beforehand? Oh, uh, no, it no. I, yeah, I, I, um, I, I do a lot of improvisation. Actually, uh, what I do usually when I record, so this record, um, I recorded myself. Uh, instead of I, I recorded my vocals by myself instead of going All in right. with somebody else and uh, and I think sometimes you get a little bit more of that singing in the shower you know freedom where you're not you're not scared of whatever and um, what I what I'll tend to do is I, I record the whole song pretty pretty strict and pretty straight you know pretty just you know note 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 and then um, at the very end after I'm done uh, I'll just I'll just do a take where I just go nuts and just sing whatever and um, and uh, I think because I was totally alone in the room I was able to I was able to like do things that I maybe would have been scared to do in front of people so that's where you get runs like that is just because I was just because no one else was there watching me otherwise I would have been like eh, eh, <laughs> yeah getting stuck in yeah. it's good that's the way to do it uh, we should say as well obviously at the time of recording the uh, expensive mistakes videos just kind of dropped oh, yes, yesterday yes, yes. which was so much fun so many nice little references there for fans and stuff uh, first of all we got to talk about the phone number that is your voice right on the other end of that phone number on the screen thank you for calling the follow up boys please listen to the menu carefully to select your expensive mistake yes yeah yes, yeah yeah i've been doing yeah yeah yes i forgot yes i did do that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah oh yeah you did do that there's some great <laughs> stuff on that talk me through that but you sound like the movie phone man oh yeah yeah well so um it's funny i i uh I do from time to time do a bit of uh, a voiceover work. It, Robot it, chicken it's, and stuff, it's, right? It yeah. happened. Yeah, I, I have done some some voiceover stuff, and I, I mentioned this to our our, uh, our managers, and they said, "Well, great, you'll be the voice on the phone." And uh, and and I was like, "Well, if I'm gonna be the voice on the phone, I'm gonna be the voice on the phone." Yeah, you of know? course. So, so um, so whatever. So that was just a lot of fun, and I and I uh, I look forward to any time I get to do some announcery stuff like that. So. Yeah, it works. It suits you very well. It's <laughs> a good one. Want to get it on a record soon? This works very well. And of course, Joe, the other uh, great moment in that video, you and Andy, new kind of hug for everyone to develop there. <laughs> it's new to me that it's new to everybody else. Has that been going for a while? That particular hug. Oh yeah, it's big. It's big and big where I come from, the small town I'm from. <laughs> that's how you hug. So yeah, you, you and Andy have been doing that one on the road for a while then. That's, a, that's in fact, that isn't as limber as we usually go. Just keep it there. <laughs> so wait, what? This, okay, extra elements for that one. Next video, let's throw in some extra ones for that one. Uh, I want to take a look back as well. I was chatting to Pete a few weeks back, and uh, we were saying it's um, Take This to Your Grave 15th anniversary this year, which is crazy, right? Wild, yeah. 15 years, man. Yes. And, uh, and I was asking him, I know he was saying that um, you're not necessarily going to be the band that's looking to the past. You're always looking to the future. Okay. And, uh, maybe not doing like a full album show or anything. But I was curious if you want going to bring a couple of tracks back in the set list. Well, this, that's exactly the thing. That's one of the reasons why uh, we avoid being that band is because we never cut any of those songs. You know, sure. we do actually play yeah. a couple. Literally, sure, sure, sure. Liter yeah. literally a couple <laughs> of tracks from that record yeah. in our every, every night and yeah. so that's one of the things that we we uh you know when you when you come and see us um you're gonna get at any show you're gonna get aside in, unless it's like you know a radio show where you have you know three songs or something sure. like that you, we do cover every record because oh, yeah. i feel like that's the that's kind of a, a thing for us is we don't really you know we don't really like to dwell in the past but we also don't want to like pretend it didn't happen you know so yeah, like sure. so like um yeah, I don't know that we'd ever do a, a full album tour, but you, I don't know that we'll ever play a show where we don't touch on that record. So. Yeah. Also, like, people think they want to hear every song from that record, and I guarantee you if we... I mean, we can play it. I don't think people will be as... Uh, enthralled as they believe they'll be. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you'd be surprised. I think anything. Yeah, yeah. You could crack out anything. Someone's going to be enthralled. Yeah, but I mean, I think if we did the record from front to back, I sure. don't know, maybe. I don't know. I Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. That's just my um, self-deprecating opinion. <laughs> 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 That's fair enough. Uh, the other, I mean, again, yeah, we could we could pick any date, and you're going to have an anniversary of something, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. it's also coming up a decade since uh, Folly Adieu, which is one of my favorite oh, records you. of you guys. Uh, and again, I was wow, trying those to. Those are Pete. that close. Man, no, that's crazy, crazy it isn't it? Like, they feel like they feel like a decade apart. That's you wild. guys threw them all together in those early yeah, years. Yeah. It's crazy. But um, yeah, one of the other great moments on there is a twenty dollar nosebleed, and mm. Pete was saying that that's actually one of his favorite memories in the studio was <laughs> you and Brendan going toe to toe in there. But, yeah, my my favorite thing about that about that that recording is that um, yeah so we did sing into either side of the same microphone um, it's U47 so you know you can switch it so that it goes um, well actually it was U48 so it could go 
you know, uh, two sided. Right. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that's the same level, you know, like physically, you know, they're, they're like, they're like this right? singing anyway. And, uh, I am a good foot shorter than, than Brendan. So I, so I sang that entire song uh, standing on like a, like an apple box is what they call them. Um, and, uh, so the pictures, I don't know if there's pictures of it, but it was pretty funny is that we are singing at each other and it was really neat. And, and, and Pete was like, yeah, it's really great. It's so, it's so neat. And then the whole time I'm singing like, like, wow, I'm, I'm a short man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is a very, very tall man, to he's be not, fair. That's an, the way to work it. He's not incredibly... That's the thing, though. He's not I an incredibly tall man. He's the same height as me. I'm five foot eight. Okay, yeah. So not, maybe not a foot taller than me, but, but enough... I feel like he was taller than me. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's oh, a fair enough. I mean, I, how tall... How tall everyone, oh, I'm, I'm only five eight, but like, I feel like he was ev- towering. Maybe everyone he is, got big shoes. As I don't a know. general rule, most... Yeah, he's not that... He's, he's pretty, like, on the average spectrum of height. We'll everyone's, height tall, everyone's taller than me. That's the point. Is that is that we just got back from Sweden and uh, I guess I guess somewhere in the you know because Americans are all part everything aren't we I'm part Swedish and I was like goodness gracious I didn't get any of my height from here (laughs) fair enough Um, yeah the other thing I wanted to talk to you about briefly is uh, your solo record which I've always loved Mm. it seems like over the last few years it's gained more and more of this cult following online I don't know if you've noticed this it's maybe because it kind of bridges the gap a lot between your kind of old Mm. sound and the new sound like bringing in more of those poppy elements how do you kind of look back on that record now it's such a weird thing because i mean so much of it um i think the a lot of the music um didn't really go as far as i had meant to so when you saw it live i think um that went that was a little bit closer to where i was going with it um uh so it has this kind of unique thing in that that i don't uh, that, that I don't even know how I would create a record like that again because because it was kind of like it was still kind of restrained which is it was just, it's just such a strange record when I look back and I'm like I wouldn't know how to make that record again and then the other thing was that I I as a general rule am terrified of people and attention and then for some reason for a couple years I dyed my hair and wore these suits and like really was out there Hi I'm Patrick Stump and um, you may recognize me from somewhere I don't know maybe we went to high school together but and I'm like goodness gracious I what possessed me I could never do that again you know (laughs) so the whole thing um I think it's such a strange uh it's such a strange moment that uh I'm really proud of and I'm really uh, amazed that I was able to accomplish especially because you know I can scarcely or uh you know return a phone call with a, a, a hello hello uh just you know i'm just i'm just so scared of of people i don't know how i i let that out there so no it was an amazing achievement absolutely uh, so i want to finish on a game we play games with everybody here but before i do are you guys stranger things fans you yes. big stranger things fans yeah it's good have you seen the video going around of dustin himself gator matarazzo yeah. have you seen yeah. it yeah. isn't it brilliant it's so cool. yeah a very cool <laughs> Incredible! It's so it's so neat. They he did that. So. Well, I did see that uh, Haley Williams has invited him uh, for a little sing song because he did Misery Business as well. Any thoughts? Could we get Gate? And I believe his sister Sabrina was the other big singer on there. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, if if you're in town, do you think uh, Dustin could maybe come along? And do <laughs> yeah, a little... that'd be so neat. Uh, yeah, we'd let, of course. Yeah, he's a good he's a good kid. It's a good it's nice to see them uh, all covering you guys. It's good stuff. Uh, <laughs> boys, it's no, it's been an absolute pleasure. Looking forward to seeing you guys back here in Cheers. March uh, for the arena shows. Looked amazing in America. Any particular moment? moments to look out for any changes new songs presumably going to be thrown into the set list a little bit more oh next time yeah yeah, uh, yeah. i mean we're going to do it'll, it'll probably be a completely different set and and we'll try a bunch of different things and probably new songs and different old songs and things like that um a couple of songs from take this Tuesday. hey you heard it here first <laughs> there you will see a couple songs remember from- Remember the difference between a couple and a few. There it is. <laughs> uh, Patrick and Joe, so good to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks for having us.